Man, it has been a hot minute since I've been able to do a film breakdown off a win, especially off a win like we saw the other night. Let's jump into this. What is up, Finn fans? Film Breakdown Day. We're going to be looking at the film and looking at a few plays. Now, if I broke down as many plays as I wanted to, this video would be like over an hour and a half long. Um, and I'm pretty sure you guys don't want to sit me rambling and drawing things for an hour and a half. So we got a good portion of plays here. Uh, some defensive plays. There's the one hold on Chop Robinson I want to look at because I think that he's getting held a lot and that is inhibiting him from doing his job. Um, and a lot of offensive plays, but it's a very up and down game from the offense. So we're going to look at the good and the bad from the offense and all that stuff. So without me rambling on anymore, let's minimize my shelf and jump into this mamma jam. So... Uh, I'm gonna put myself. I'm gonna put myself over here. If I get in the way, then I will. I, I'm, you know what's funny? I got a green screen coming, so when I do this stuff, I can just. It's just my head. Hi, everybody. Anyway, we're gonna start with Chop Robinson's sack here. It's a thing of beauty. So I'm just gonna play it, and we're gonna break it down. <clears throat> Chop is up here at the top of the screen. This is on third and nine, and they're on the 50-yard line. Just, just beautiful. Now, what I love also <clears throat> is how they have all these guys over here, and they have Chop all alone over here. You have uh, Walker here. He's going to drop back into coverage, and it forces these five offensive linemen to decide because you know are you going to have two guys come over here and try to block chop and have these three come over here and try to block these guys because that's not going to work because you have your edge rusher get around there or are you going to take this guy come over here and leave this one on one it's a big rigmarole of what you're going to do also are they going to be blitzing um brook <laughs> There's an N S at his name. So I really love this formation, especially in the fact that it puts Chop on his own. And all Chop does, and I talked about this in yesterday's video, Chop's first step is elite. It's physical, it's fast, it's elite. He needs to work on finishing. And essentially that's what he does, because he's going to rush the, um, the end, and then he's going to just go around them. Because when I first watched this, I thought he was coming from here, and I thought he was doing. I thought they were pulling a little bit of a stunt here, because from when I saw it, it looked like he was coming straight up the middle, but he just straight up goes at the uh, defensive end or the the tackle, goes at him, and then he just scoops around him, and just completely makes the the tackle look like a big dumb. We'll watch it one more time. So it looks like they're blitzing uh, Brooks. They are not. He's going to drop back into coverage, which then forces them. But you see here, they have to slide over to, you know, Calais Campbell is going to be taken on by this guy. and going to leave the center. Just runs right by him. Runs at him. And then just f sees the gap here, runs by him. He's got the speed. Boom. Makes the play. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now, this is not a beautiful play. This is a run. It's first and 10. We're on our own 29. Um, this is a run play. I th it's to the left and Aaron Brewer. So it's a run play this way. We have Jalen Wright back here. He's going to be taking the handoff and he's going to be going this way. Aaron Brewer is going to be pulling with him and he gets blown up, I think, by 95 right here. He gets blown up so bad that he pushes him back into Jalen Wright, which forces him to go up more than he wants to to come down and around. And it's just it's just a hot mess. Brewer gets completely destroyed, and it's kind of the theme of this game versus this defensive line. So you see the pull here from Brewer. Boom. So if Brewer was able to hit his man when he needed to, right, 
So if Brewer was able to come in here and seal off this block, right? You have Armstead come down, seal off this block. You have that lane for Jalen Wright to go around the edge. And again, this is first down. It's first and 10. So you have the lane. You have one guy to beat uh, with the potential of him coming up and leading a block as well. He probably would come down here and then block him. But still, you'd have somewhat of a lane. But that is not what happens, unfortunately. And Aaron Brewer gets blasted. You never want your offensive lineman to be on one foot. and gets pushed back, forcing Jalen Wright to bounce it to the outside, allowing for that corner to make up and have a tackle of three-yard loss there. Have to do better there. This is the hold play. This happened like three or four times. I'm going to be petty. We won. I deserve to be petty here. Look at the top of the screen. This man was like, Chop beat me so bad last time for a sec. I'm not letting it happen again. That, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, right here is what we like to call in the NFL a hold. You see his arm is wrapped right around and you see uh chops arm is holding him but he's got him around the front this is called a hold and he is holding him uh because if not he probably would have destroyed stafford um still holding him still holding him still hold you can tell when an offensive lineman knows that they held somebody or when a, a wide receiver or a tight end is when they throw their hands up uh, and he's trying to get his other hand up, but he's holding him. It's a hold. Chop was getting held all game because he's starting his first step, and that acceleration is so dangerous that these guys, these tackles that aren't prepared for that, are struggling against him. Uh, this next play is a 15-yard run from Devon A. Chan, and it's just a thing of beauty. I want you to see the move he does when he passes the line of scrimmage. A little tush tap there, let him know. Great blocking here, great blocking here, great blocking here. Actually, you know what, let me. This isn't the first time that Liam Meikenberg struggled by city. <sighs> But thank God Aaron Brewer got blocked into him, and uh, Devon Achan has the vision to bounce it to the inside, and then wh whoop! Just watch it in full full speed. Just, just dangerous. He is just dangerous of a running back for us. But Liam, he's got to go, man. Absolutely got to go. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Next play is, unfortunately, the Jalen Waddle drop. Um, right here, you have uh, Jalen Waddle out here. You have Tyreek Hill. Hill. <laughs> Tyreek Hill here. Tyreek Hill is going to kind of run a little bit of a comeback. And what that's going to do is that's going to uh, have this corner drop back and then kind of stick with him. And then he's also going to drop back and stick with him. Everyone's afraid of number 10. Nobody wants number 10 to beat them deep. And that is why for most of this game, they had a cover two going on. They didn't want number 10 to have any go routes, any easy touchdowns. But that move leaves Jalen Waddle open. There's a little bit of a cushion here. The safety is going to drop back because, again, they're afraid seeing Tyree kill in the slot. They don't want him to have a go route. So from here to about here... There's this nice empty space right here where Jalen Waddle is going to be. Tua hits him perfectly, and he drops it. Let's see if I remember the play correctly. Yep, I did. Oh, you got to catch that. They, Regardless, they're afraid, like I said, of this man. Peels off. Tua sees it. Let's it fly. Perfect timing. Perfect pass. You got to catch that possibility you break this tackle and get a touchdown and i think that's what he was thinking drop the ball we end up kicking a field goal left four points on the field <clears throat> now some more bad this is the first half it will get better to a talk of the lowest interception such a dumb interception let's watch it <laughs> i 
we're going to watch the rest of it, but I need to break down the play first before we watch the rest of it. Right, rolling out. I get it because, again, their defensive line was super strong. Side note, look at Teron Armstead. Just <laughs> get the heck out of here. I see what he saw, right? You're looking here. He's got this guy, but again, there he's he's on his butt. He's on his butt. This guy's getting triple blocked. You're fine, Tua. You didn't really need to heave it. You have Jalen Waddle here coming this way. The D the linebacker is gonna be coming this way. Easy pickoff. If he just would have waited a second like he could have, you had Tyreek Hill crossing right here. And this was on second and fourteen. So he didn't need to throw the ball. Worst case scenario, just take the sack. Right here. If you're going to throw a ball up in the air and hope and pray that 56, what he was hoping, because obviously Tua knows the play, you have Tyreek on a crosser and you have him kind of running one of these mamma jams. He was hoping 56 was going to bite down on Tyreek Hill's crosser, just like he's biting down on Tyreek Hill's crosser, leaving it open for Jalen Waddle in this little area. But nope, the defender comes back this way because he reads his eyes. It's also a horrible throw when you look at the, the positioning of his body and his uh, mechanics of throwing that ball. But if he would have just held it for another second, he would have had that. And then, to put the cherry on top of it, what are you doing? Throw the interception and go to the sideline. At that point, go to the sideline. Because he even said to the player, why don't you just go out of bounds or whatever? Like, <laughs> what, it's just, it's you and him. It's you and him, and he's just coming right at you. What are you doing? And I get it, you get down, you get low, you try to take his legs out. He knees you in the head. Look at this. We held them to a field goal. That's how good our defense played in this game. We held them to a field goal. Um, so there's the interception. Now I'm going to pick on Liam Eichenberg. Again, this is still the first half, but I'm going to pick on Liam, by, like, Liam Eichenberg right here. Again, I showed you the other play where Devon, uh, Devon A. Chan actually had a good run and a nice spin there. Not so much of a good run here. Um, because Liam Eikenberg gets pushed backwards. Again, just bullied. And what are we supposed to do here? This is a negative three-yard run. 95 brown again brown was the same one who pushed aaron brewer back he was just being a destructive force for our offensive line if he could have just made his block there was a lane here to gain some yards i think it's slammed on the ground unnecessary roughness um hello um so there's that and then we have the fumble here which again First half, I do have good plays, trust me. But we have to look at the bad if we're going to look at the good because, again, it's another situation where Tua just needs to get rid of the ball. Throw the ball. It is third and 13. Just throw the ball. Who am I going to throw the ball to, Doug? Well, you have a clean pocket. This is the – look at where his feet are. And look at where his arm is. That is not a good position for your right tackle to be in. But you have a clean pocket. You're planting your back foot. Hit Janu. Look at all the space Janu has in front of him. And I'll show you a play why we brought Janu Smith in. Hit Janu. Don't hold the ball. Still holding the ball. Still holding. Like, do you, what are you waiting for him to do? Throw it to Jonu Smith. Throw it to Jonu Smith. Throw it to Jonu Smith. <laughs> Why? And then, of course, he fumbles and they get the ball. Why? One. Like, he had one, two, three, four. Get rid of the ball. Once you hit two and a half, get rid of the ball. Boom. Jonu. How you doing? Jonu. How you doing? Jonu. <laughs> 
<laughs> killing me. Absolutely killing me here. Then this is another sack. <laughs> this one is on second and five from Miami's 47. This one, I, I, it could go either way whose fault this is but see how he's like <sighs> for reference the pocket is middle of the field right so the pockets here and the pockets here once Tua is out of the pocket so if he's by the hash mark or if he gets past again here, so if he's anywhere over here, over here, he can throw the ball away. It's not intentional grounding because he's outside of the pocket. So again, the like that part of the A. We'll watch it again and see if he could throw the ball away. I get it. No one's open. I get it. You got this and this. No one's open. I get it, right? Still waiting. No one's open. Just throw the ball away. Like I said, if you get to this hash mark, throw the ball away. He's trying to do too much. Now he's he's panicking. He's trying to find somebody. It was supposed to be a screen. 100% was supposed to be a screen. But now he's panicking. Just throw the ball away. Don't take an unwarranted sack. Throw the ball away. Speaking of sacks, pause on that. Quinnen. Bell. Do you remember hearing that name in the offseason? This beautiful human being right here, Quinnen Bell. Look at the speed, and he just makes this left tackle look silly. And they get that ball back. But just look at the speed he gets off here. If our pass rush can play like this every week against the Raiders against the Patriots, against the Packers, against the Texans. Texans are having trouble with their offensive line. You know, we lose one game and we get to 10 wins, say we lose that 49ers game, but we win all the other games because our pass rush wakes up and we get Bradley Chubb back. This team could be dangerous. Look how fast he comes off the edge there. And they had a full, uh, fully healthy offensive line. They got their guys back in Avila and all these other guys. Their offensive line was fully healthy. There was no excuse of, well, they weren't didn't have a health, um, healthy offensive line. Now we got the good. Now we got a bunch of good plays. There's one bad play, but outside of that, for the next five plays, I'm going to show you, uh, six plays, I'm going to show you good plays after good plays after good plays. And I showed you the play where he got the strip sack, and he had Johnu Smith, and he had a little distance in front of him. It was third and 13 on our own 48. This is a prime example of just hit Johnu and trust him. He got a crossing route here from Johnu Smith, hit him. Watch this. One, two, just so close to the touchdown. But that's why the Dolphins brought this man in. He is, he, you know, you, you look at different metrics. It's either yards after carry or yards after contact. He does both. Crossing route hits easily. Look at, there's no blockers. No blockers at all. He just bounces off them because he's a huge human being. And that's why we brought John U. Smith in. And that's why instead of taking that sack when two was sit, sitting back looking at John U. for a good four seconds, should have just dumped it off to him. Probably would have got the first down. This is uh, Javon Holland's sack. Now, Javon Holland is right here at the top of the screen. This is a third and seven on the Dolphins 23. Uh, they dial up a blitz and they call it at the perfect time. Now, I thought it was a half sack between him and Chop. Chop does a little stunt here and just free rushers. Now, I even think if this was anyone else, if, say, this was Kyler Murray, you know, uh, Josh Allen, whoever, they might take off running this way to give themselves more time. But just beautifully called, r great defensive call to send that blitz in because who did they send? You have uh, Brooks here, you have Chop, and you have Javon Holland. Then you have Calais Campbell, and you have Sealer here. So they sent the linebacker and the safety and sent three defensive linemen. And then 
sacked him at what the 36 37 making that field goal about a 52 53 yard field goal beautiful call absolutely beautiful call now this is the last bad play of the video i'm going to show you and after this i have plays to show you two are actually doing really well this is the sack this is the sack that um second and 10 we're on their 38 and this is the sack that led to a third and 19. Now, again, it's another situation where Tua didn't need to take the sack. Like, look how much time he had. He's killing me. Drop back. Boom. Right? Plant the foot. You want to see who's open. No one's really open here. No one's really open here. Okay. You got more time. Boom. You have Julian Hill open here. You have Tyreek Hill getting open right in this zone. The, you, that Tyreek Hill's the pass here. Tyreek Hill, right here. That's your pass. You even have Durham Smythe over the middle. You had plethora of opportunity. Boom. Boom. Like, he should know. Tyreek Hill's the pass. Drop back, looking. Hit Tyreek. Throw the ball. Boom. But gets frantic. Takes a sack. Then, but then, and this is where I start to, like, get a little frustrated with his inconsistencies. This is the very next play. This is a play where we're only up by eight. And we need points. I got something in my eye. We need points here to keep the lead. So, again, the defense is doing their job. You are not doing your job. I apologize. Something is in my eye. We need the offense to get some points here. And another situation. Drop back. Look at that free rusher. To a spins out of it. Rolls to his right. He's a left th left armed quarterback. Rolling to your right and throwing uh, lefty is very difficult to do. Again, try rolling out left and throwing righty. It's difficult. But with pressure on him, finds the open man who is Raheem Mostert, and he has all of this real estate. He has to get past here. All that real estate. And he does a perfect job of flicking the ball to him. And Raheem does the rest and gets the first down. <clears throat> We end up kicking a field goal. We go back up by 11. Then they kick a field goal. Now, this drive here is where I'm saying you seal the game here, offense. There's, you know, we had the uh, Cardinals game. You just needed a first down. We need a first down here. It's pivotal, this, this, and that. They didn't do it. And we ended up losing the game to the Cardinals because the defense couldn't stop them. It was the same situation. I'm watching this game and I'm saying, offense, you just need to get like two first downs. There was five minutes left in the game. Eat the clock up. You can get two or three first downs. You can eat up so much clock. Just please, for the love of God, get a first down. It is third and six. We are on our own 34. All by himself in the shotgun. You got your receivers down here in Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell, Odell Beckham. You have Raheem Mostert up here, and you have Jonu Smith up here. Drops back, rolls out, don't like seeing Tron Armstead on his face. Hits Odell for the first down. But the thing I love here is watch Odell, right? Odell's coming back. He's looking at Tua. They have a, and this is what they worked on while he was banged up and he was banged up. Communication. He was like, okay, I got you. Rolled out, turned up field, boom, hit him. I don't know how. I don't know how he knew he was going to turn back up field because this ball is already out right here. How did he know he was going to go there? It's just the communication gets the first down. Pivotal. And again, like I said to you, that's another situation. He had the sack. He had multiple sacks where he got, didn't have to take him, could have thrown the ball away, held onto the ball for too long. But then when we needed him to, Back-to-back -back plays of him evading pressure, getting the ball down the field, getting the first downs. This play here is a first and 10, and it is a dot. And this is kind of what sealed the game because it put us in a great situation. We are on our own 45. This is a 17-yard play, which in turn puts us on their 38, if my brain, if my math is working properly in my head. Drops back, looks, has time. Like, the, the amount of accuracy 
and he had to put a zip on this ball to fit it in this tight window to get it to Malik Washington, who I am loving this draft pick more and more. Like, look at that. Just so you know, the ball is right here. That's where the ball is. It's right there. Look how close number three's hand is to smacking it. It's right there. Perfect pass to get it to him, to put it where it needs to be, and to get that first down. And seal the game. Because now, like I said, we're on there 38. I think we've run it a few more times. Eat more clock up, give it to him, go up by 11, and, and the game is essentially out of reach for him. So this was a game that some sloppiness there. First half was sloppy, but they did what they had to do. And in the second half, the def well, for the most part, this defense was just playing great. And like I said, if the pass rush can wake up, I have a video talking about Jalen Waddle, um, not Jalen Waddle, uh, Isaiah Wynn, and talking about um, Chubb and all these other guys with the potential of them coming back. There's a lot that could turn this season around. Now, am I getting my hopes up? No, because I'm a Dolphins fan. But if they play like they did on Monday night, and if the offense can give us a little bit more, I don't think there's a team they can't beat going into the playoffs. Now, when we get in the playoffs, that's a horse of a different color because these teams are not going to be as bad as the teams are going to face in the Jets, the Patriots, the Raiders, the Browns, you know. So the test is the Packers, the Texans, and the 49ers. You beat those three teams or you make those games competitive like you did against the Bills and like you did against the Rams and you did against the Cardinals, you never know. But comment below. Let me know what you think of this film breakdown. I'll see you guys tomorrow with the pick video, and then I'll see you guys Friday with the preview, and then I am leaving Saturday to head to the game. I will let you – I will put up like a, a short letting you guys know where I'll be uh, at tailgating before the game. I might even just walk around. So if you see me, you want to say hi, you want to take a picture, I am so open to saying hi and meeting a bunch of you guys. But other than that, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Like usual, stay classy. If it's up.